right, you are back listening to It's a Man's World, and very soon we're going to have Jana Mashoni of Raptor Ranch. Is that the name of it? Raptor Ranch, a.k.a. the Dinosaur Experiment. Right, and singer and songwriter call in, and well, here she is right now. Thanks for calling in, Jana. Thanks for having me. No problem. We found you after uh, our writer, Travis, you know, wrote the article about you, and, and then we started kind of looking into you and said, well, let's get her on the show. So we're so glad you can. So Travis is not on this show to redeem himself? No. He's, he's, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. great. I love it. He's a lowly writer. We, we don't let them on, <laughs> on the mic. <laughs> but no, he, he was super excited. Yeah, he was excited, though. Like I was like, yeah. So is it, it's Dinosaur Experiment. I know they changed the name. I think it was yeah. Raptor Ranch. So they changed it to Dinosaur Experiment. Yes. Okay, so um, yeah, that was, and the weird thing is to be even more confusing. Overseas, like it's in Japan and um, and like the UK, it's called Raptor Ranch overseas. Okay, but here it's called the Dinosaur Experiment. I don't know why. I kind of like Raptor Ranch. I thought it was, that was a great title, but well, yeah, it's got the alliteration. But yeah, I hadn't heard yeah. of that, but now that I have, I'm definitely gonna watch it because, like I was saying, I love. Uh, B movies, or like some people have told you, D movies. I I, yeah. I I watched I watched a preview. I can tell you right now, it is not a D movie because I have seen some D movies. Some I love to watch local movies. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I I've seen a lot I mean, of. Uh, like I said, it's you know you're, uh, I tell people you know I tell you know what I told my friends and family about the movie and like I was like don't expect anything you know that's gonna be an Oscar winning <laughs> performance or anything like that. It's just kind of a fun and there's, uh, so I'm always prefacing people, don't expect much, but it's fun. It's actually a fun movie. Well I'm sure if you wanna be entertained, that's and that's kind of what movies are about. Exactly. And I'm you know and I'm sure they're not even if they're not expecting much out of it, I mean you're in a movie, they are not in a movie. So that's the way I would look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how did you get involved? We'll start with that then. How did you get involved in this movie? I know you're you know, looking back at your career, it looks like you're primarily a singer. You know, we'll definitely touch on that. Yeah. But how did you yeah. get involved with a movie like this? Because we've talked to some people that were involved with Birdemic in the past, and they had some great stories to share with us of how they got involved. How, I mean, how did you mm-hmm. get involved with this? Well, mine, mine is not anything interesting as far as, you know, I met through the, it was kind of one of these things where the director was looking, um, they're looking for the lead to be an ethnic female and at the time because you know it's based in texas they were thinking of having a hispanic female but the director was thinking well let me do something different let me think of something uh in a different ethnicity and of course you know native native americans are just not shown and you know and in, in modern television unless you know it's very you know unless it's historical or i mean it's there's nothing that's contemporary so he kind of went out on a limb and I, he literally just kind of Google searched. Now, he didn't know anything about me or anything. And he, uh, I guess he just Google searched Native American female or something. Um, and it came across me, and he kind of liked my look. And so it, it kind of went from there because, you know, at that time, I hadn't, you know, I really didn't have any acting experience whatsoever. And I told him that. And he's like, well, you know, come down here and we'll, you know, I really didn't audition. It was kind of one of these things where he just, you know, we just talked and, I kind of knew the role that he wanted, and and it went from there. So it was really one of those weird things that he just Googled me. You know, just Google Native American, and then I just happened to come up. <laughs> so, it, so it was kind of by chance that it, that happened, and I'm glad it did. But it was, you know, I think he did definitely went out on a limb with, you know, the whole ethnic thing being Native, because it, it wouldn't have mattered to me, cause, but it was something he wanted to put in there. So um, if you watch the movie, you'll see there's, you know, a little bit of a backstory. Of her. Well, let me ask you this. You're mentioning Native American roles. Yeah. One of my, actually, it is my favorite TV show on right now. It's on A&E. Have you watched the show Longmire? No, no. Oh, you have to There's watch. Natives in that? Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, yes. There. Yeah. It's about a sheriff in Wyoming who lives uh-huh. next to the reservation, and it's him dealing with, you know, what's going on around the reservation and on the reservation. Lou Diamond Phillips really? is in it. Yeah, it is Fantastic! It is my favorite show oh, on wow. TV right now. It's fantastic. The first two seasons are on Netflix streaming, and the third okay. season um, just ended. I think I think last night uh, was the uh, not to date this interview, but was the uh, fi- finale for the third season. I have, you know what? I've heard of it, but I, I didn't know that there was such a native presence. I know there's Banshee. Do you know that show Banshee on Showtime? Yes. Uh huh. 
um, because I know that I, I actually have friends of mine, native friends, who are like, you should audition for this, and they, they're they're actually on the show. But um, uh, but I know there's there's kind of native there. So I mean, there's a sprinkling of things here and there, which is awesome. I think that's great. You know, it's just slowly coming about where you know, because native people are just like everybody else. It's just that. You know, it's just always been, we're kind of stuck. You know, a lot of, I know a lot of Native actors, you know, they complain, you know, I don't know if they complain, but I mean, there aren't, there aren't many roles that are just to be, you know, just to play a role, like, without having to be a Native, you know? So it's really tough, but I'm glad there are starting to be some, you know, some shows and things like that that can incorporate, you know, contemporary Natives. And that's that's the whole point. Like the movie too, kind of shows that, which it wasn't totally intentional, but it just kind of it just kind of shows a girl who happens to be native, and she's living in Texas, and she fights dinosaurs. You know, by the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just a kind of a side, like, oh, she's native in Texas, and she fights dinosaurs. So it's not like a focus, but it's it's kind of cool that you know that they're they kind of put that backstory in there. I thought it was kind of cool. Cool. Yeah. So, kind of saying that same Native American topic, I want this is more of a serious question for you. You know, in the uh-huh. news every day, you're seeing the uh, the Washington Redskins and the debate between should they keep that name or should they, you know, change it to something else. You know, you, there's other sports, professional sports teams with those names, those types of names. What What are your uh, thoughts on that? Well, I don't normally like to. I don't normally talk about anything that might be even totally political sounding, sure. no or problem. but no I mean, this is not. It's kind of a social issue. I'm going to tell you my my personal feeling, and a, a lot of uh, other natives that are friends of mine don't have a problem with it. Um, no, I, but I can't speak for other people, so it, I don't see it as an offense. The name itself, many years ago. Um, was used in a sense, just, you know, there's, but, you know, the problem is that day and age, a lot of people don't see it that way, just like, you know, there's certain words like, um, oh, God, there's a Native word, I'm just thinking, think, oh, like, for instance, squaw. Squaw is actually very derogatory, so if you call a Native a squaw, it's derogatory, but some people don't know that. They just say, oh, there's a squaw, and they think it's just like a little girl. It actually means prostitute, whore, you know, it's it's not, you know, it's not favorable, but, but I think wow. in the context, it's only meant to be fun, it's meant to be a strong statement about being strong, so I don't, me personally, I don't find it offensive, but there might be other natives who do, I mean, I, I just, I just don't see it as something where we, sh- I think we have, my issue is we have bigger fish to fry as far as native issues than a stupid name, like dealing with redskins, I mean, we have so many issues within the Native community that we need to deal with, like drugs, alcohol, uh, you know, abuses and, and, and diabetes. We have so many things that we have to address that w- worrying about a football team is like, the, for me, is like low priority. Right. So I don't, I don't have a problem with it, uh, you know. But that's just, yeah. that's just me. So right. I don't, you know, a lot of the times when I say something, um, People read it and they say, "Oh, well, Jana says this, so I guess all native." Oh no, that doesn't work. <laughs> I don't speak for all native people. All right, Jana, we'll sit tight with us. We're going to a break. When we come back, we'll touch on some more lighter topics like what uh, you wear when you're fighting dinosaurs. We'll talk more about your music. So sit tight with us, everybody. We'll be right back with Jana after these commercials. All right, we're back, and you're listening to It's a Man's World with Corey and Dave. You can find us at MenRule.net, and of course, on the line we have Jana Mashoni. Very talented actress, singer, songwriter. And so what we really wanted to know, I've had this thought with me since we left for the break. Um, what is appropriate dinosaur fighting attire? I was curious about that. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I was wearing it in the movie. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, you have to have something that's very breathable because you're probably going to sweat. You're going gonna, gonna to work with the sweat. Um, you know, but the makeup's got to be good the entire time. That was very important. Well, yeah, it's, it's, you got to make sure you look good while you're fighting. Right. So make sure everything's in place. I mean, my co-host here is uh, from time to time he offers commentary on women with and without makeup, mm-hmm. and he understands. And that's Corey. I'm talking about he he uh, <laughs> he thinks makeup is very important for women in today. So I'm, I'm glad you had that. You so. know, they they did a study where it because we all women always hear 
either our boyfriends or, you know, other guys and say, oh, well, women are, you know, we love women natural. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think men like to see the women dressed up and look nice. They just don't want it overdone, like, you know, like Tammy Faye or something. But they kind of want, you know, a nice look. So it's not, I don't, natural, I don't think guys want it completely bare. That's what I think. So I, my, my prerequisite for the movie when I did the role was, when I had a makeup artist, I just said, please make sure that everything's in place at all times. <laughs> now, I got one I other... Yeah. all I require, you know? <laughs> well, I got one other question, I, and you may not have the answer to this, but on the box to the movie, The Dinosaur Experiment, this is not... Yeah. You're not on it. Like... I know. Do you know why... What decision was made for that? Or what... I mean, it's kind of strange. Well, it's really weird because if you actually like go to a Walmart or something and you look at the box on the front it's you know you've got these two people that are models that they put on the front cover that aren't in the movie that are supposed to represent myself and Lorenzo Lamas but then you turn it over and you see a completely different girl which is me and then Lorenzo Lamas and other people so I don't know well I, I will tell you this the distributor did apologize because he did say I did not know that wasn't Jana. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I mean, I'm just, I mean, that's you know, that's just kind of what happened, and it was taken over. Producer took it over to distributor, and then it was one of these things where I guess all dark-haired girls look alike. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Of course they do. Yeah. That that was definitely kind of weird when I when I when I first saw it. I was like, oops, that's not me. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Now, you know, I think you're around probably the same age as us in the ballpark. What was it like working with Lorenzo Lamas, who, I mean, me and Corey, I mean, we've known him. You know, he's been in yeah a lot yeah, of movies. Like Renegade watched. and stuff? Yes. What was it like well, working with him? I will, well, let me, well, I will tell you, I, didn't, I never worked with Lorenzo. Oh, no. Yeah. So His he choice? Had a, or? He had a separate shoot. This, and this, I'll tell you, this is, this is the movie. He had a separate shoot. And they had a stand-in for me because I couldn't make it out to L.A. during that time. You know, we had filmed in Texas and in Russia. Wow. And then there was L.A. And I was like, I'm done traveling. Just all you have to do is get a stand-in because all he did was kind of, well, I'm not going to tell the story. But, okay. yeah, so I got a stand-in for that. There was a fan. So, no, I never met him. Okay. No. Well, there you go. Maybe maybe another time, another place. So, <laughs> so do you, do you see more movies in your career? Was that something you enjoyed the process of? Do you want to do more of that? I did. I I, I wanted to try to see if it was something that I could, first of all, that I could get through, and if I liked it, because you know it's completely different than music. It's a very collaborative, um, you know, thing where me as a solo artist, I'm used to working on my own and my stuff and my things and and working in a movie where it's somebody else's words and somebody else's character. I mean, it looks fun. Um, I am, uh, I've actually got a couple of um, projects that um, I'm kind of interested in doing. But, yes, I think it's something that I almost have to do because as an artist, in order to get my music out and to really, you know, kind of have people know you, you kind of have to do a lot of things Um, besides this music. For me, I feel like if I kind of get into acting people can discover me as a musical artist because that's what I really care about so it's just another way of marketing myself and you know but I enjoyed doing it I mean it was fun right um if another b-movie comes along I will I'll take it you know it's one of those things where it was fun to do and um and I'll absolutely do it again because it's just great great exposure for me and, and I really want to get my music out so it's just another way of doing that bigger accomplishment Doing the uh, I'm sorry, doing the soundtrack for the movie or for singing for President Obama? Oh, I was definitely singing for President Obama, <laughs> not the soundtrack. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, yeah, no, yeah. the soundtrack for the movie was yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, <laughs> it was definitely. Uh, there was no contest. Right. Next. <laughs> Next. Well, let's talk about. So, I mean, you do have a. Great musical career. I mean, you are a Grammy nominated artist, which I mean, you're the first one ever to be on our show. So there's that. Oh, really? 
Now, also, yes, you are. Oh. And uh, that's, I mean, but you don't meet many people that are Grammy nominated, to be fair. So that's a great, right. you know, that's a great accomplishment. Now, I do want to talk about, Corey is a huge Led Zeppelin fan. I mean, they're one of his favorite bands of all time. Now, okay. you did a version, a controversial, as your Wikipedia page said, as I read yeah. earlier this week, of Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. Um, yeah. And, and that made the Billboard dance charts, is that right? It did. What? Uh, yeah. how, how do you get there? I mean, are you a Led Zeppelin fan? How did you come to to do the well, song differently? I, I mean, well, I, um, it's, I, I, I'm not a fan in that I know all their songs, so I don't want to say, oh, yeah, I'm a big fan because I couldn't name you all of their songs. But, of course, I think he's an amazing singer, an amazing artist. Um, and so I'm not, like, one of those sacred fans who knows everything, so I don't want to speak on behalf. But it was brought to me. Um, as an idea, and so I, you know, I, you know, I was doing dance music, and I'm still doing dance music, and I thought, well, let me just do like a dance version of it, and you know, but I want to sing it in the original key. I don't want to change it or do anything too weird. Um, so I did it, and yeah, it, I mean, you know, a lot of backlash because you know, we, I, you know, up in the New York area, so we played in the tri, you know, like in the tri state area, we played it on the radio, and it was just. People were bashing it. Uh, females shouldn't sing this song. It's a dance version. It's a, uh, you know, it's just, it, it was like madness. It was just like mayhem. And it was like, to me, it just felt like it's just an interpretation of a song. I wasn't trying to do anything but just sing a song that I really liked. Right. And um, actually um, got confirmation from uh, Jimmy Page himself who heard the record and his comment, you know, you know, when people were saying, well, you know, well, she, you know, I think my manager or something said, well, you know, here's the song and, and he heard it and they're like, well, you know, she, she does it in the original key. And, and Jamie's response is, um, you know, he liked it and he's like, well, but there is no other key to do it in. This is the key. <laughs> so I mean, his, his retort back was just kind of cool because he actually never said this sucks. He was just like, well, there is no other key but this key to do it. And he just kind of gave his thumbs up. So I'm like, what well, if Jimmy Page thinks it's cool, then it can't be that bad. But, you know, that was just after the fact that, right. that all that came about. But, yeah, I mean, I think it's stupid. I mean, that people, I mean, no offense, Corey, but, I mean, music is music, and we should all be able to share I it. I didn't and, say anything negative it. about it. I, I haven't even heard the song. But I will say. Oh, you haven't heard it? You should, oh, gosh. Well, then maybe you should hear it first. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say anything I mean, negative anyways. Like I said, I like B-movies, so, you know, I, I, I like a lot of well, different then, things. Yeah. I, I mean, no it's just, that. you know, Led Zeppelin is, I mean, they're, they're gods. I well, get people, it. I, I mean, mean, people, as Dave and I have, since we've been on the radio, have come to find out, people like to bash people that, you know, are on the radio or, you know, on TV. They like to say a lot of negative things uh, to yeah. To people that I don't know, what, how would you describe it? Just like people out there that put themselves out there, people that take a risk, people yeah. that do, like you're saying, doing a yeah. song different, or, or we're not we're doing we're different than the people before, so people don't like that. You know, yeah, things like if people take a risk, you know, you're going to get more negative than positive comments. But hey, it was you yeah. know it, it got you on the charts. People exactly. must, uh, more people loved it than hated it. It's just the people that hated it are louder than the people that loved it. So that's exactly right. Well, I mean. And I'm always about there's there's just not enough time in the world to hate, but but I you know it's I'm always the type of person who just wants to put out stuff that's just you know I, I'm not doing things to be controversial. I'm just doing things that I want to do, and I think it'll be cool and it'll be positive because my whole my whole vibe is yeah you know, I want people to enjoy my music, have fun, smile, you know, or go through the journey, even if it's a dark song, you know. But it's never. I, I, you know, I think it's easy for people to judge, yeah, when they're sitting at home and behind their computers and, you know, I, I, I've, I'm the same type of person where I won't, like, I don't look at comments about myself on the internet. I, I just don't do it. Like, I've Googled myself, you know, early on, like, when I first, and I'm like, I can't do it anymore. Right. It's like, it's not, it's just like, I waste my time, you know? Right. But, for me, it's just kind of one of these things where it's, you know, I, I'm doing what I love and, and try to put out positive energy, so I'm well, trying to get it back. Well, that's good. You seem like a very positive person, too. Well, let's talk real quick because we're kind of running out of time, and we could probably talk to you for like two hours. I just looked in time and said, whoa, we've been talking to you for 
cool person for sure. Talk about your new album. And you just got one out. Is it the one new moon born? Well, yeah, well, that was, that's my, that's my last album. I'm okay. actually working on, um, I'm actually finishing up a new album, which when it's done, I'd love for you guys to get the new material. Cause it literally, I haven't, it's, it's, it's not, it's not out anywhere. Like I haven't even put it out for my fans or anything. So, um, it's like, I'm just finished vocals like last month. So it's untitled. So I, so I have to figure out a title, but it's definitely like up tempo, fun, you know. It's something where th- things are so bad sometimes, like in the world, things are so crazy. Just like with the dinosaur experiment, it's something that's like so stupid and r- like ridiculous. You know, it's actually be- be- it's like a pretty big hit with Redbox. Um, currently, um, just from what my distributor has um, been told, it's one of these things where people want to escape. And I think when my like my new album, it's more of an escape. Where it's just about having fun because things are so terrible. <laughs> there's like war, and there's you know the old thing with Gaza. Like everything is so bad, you just kind of want to escape and just have fun. And just that's kind of what the album is about. So I don't have it out yet. So okay, well no, when you get it, I would love for you to come back and you know yeah, come I'd on the show. Yeah, I'd love to just like have you yeah and just yeah we you can, know yeah for sure take, take it back. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. Because I mean, you've been you've been awesome, I and mean, we and we've interviewed some people, and and you. I mean, like I said, time's just kind of flying by. So you know, that's when you're having a good time. So, well, before we go, tell us how people can get in touch with you. Give us your contact information, your Twitter, your Facebook, your website, all that. Yeah, yeah. So um, Facebook is Jana Michonne. You know, Facebook.com. Jana Michonne. J A N A M A S H O N E E. Uh, my Twitter is the same thing, um, Jana Michelini. Um, my website, Jana Michelini. Um, Yeah, so that's the way. And then please, like anyone listening, please go to Redbox and spend the dollar twenty and go read the movie. It's an hour and a half of your life, and it will you will laugh, you know, you will smile. So I've kind of <laughs> you know. And if you can't make it to Redbox, it's at Walmart too. That's, you know. Well, that's there you cheap. go. <laughs> she's giving you yeah she's giving you a def- you have no excuse uh, I will yeah. definitely be watching that movie this week and I will tweet you to let you know what I think about it please do and I, I will. will tweet you back and, and like for your show and everything I'll put it up on my Facebook because my fans are pretty awesome, awesome. Um, actually really awesome so yeah they're, they're definitely like you know we'll definitely do a sharing fest that's fantastic we, we appreciate you taking the time to come in here and talk to us thank you Dave and Corey I really appreciate it okay we'll talk to you later Okay, bye. Bye. There's a show. All the glitter. Don't you go anywhere. There's plenty more of It's a Man's World with Corey and Dave coming up in just a few moments.
Go. Oh.